Good afternoon, Lebanon family and guests. Although you may be home, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this year's Women's Prayer Focus. God bless you all. Let us pray. O oh God, most holy Father, our help in ages past, our only hope, you are worthy of praise. We magnify your name. Thank you, Lord, for the invitation to come to you in prayer. We have sinned. We are ashamed of our waywardness. We confess to you our sins and the sins of our country. You promised in your word, if we will call on your name and change our behavior, you will hear us. You will forgive and heal our land. You will heal our nation. Thank you, Lord, for restoring so many lives touched by COVID to help. We pray for full recovery for the many who are still struggling to overcome the virus insult to their bodies. May your strength and the power flow through and bring healing and let your name be glorified. Dispel and end anxiety. Turn fear into hope, we pray. Wipe worry away from mind. Make your healing power known in this generation. Give comfort and shelter for families. Lift the dark cloud of uncertainty. We present and humbly ask that you care for and protect all of our frontline workers and volunteers. Hands and hearts that have been dedicated for caring and healing. Our nurses, physicians, technologists, ancillary workers, first responders, EMTs, fire and police officers, Army Medical Corps, as they work to alleviate pain and suffering in this crisis. Increase their skills, vision and judgment. Fill their hearts with compassion, we pray, as they faithfully discharge their duties to relieve pain and suffering. Protect and shield them and their families from this virus, this evasive, unseen enemy. Thank you for laying your hands of mercy on so many lives. We present our request in the name of Jesus Christ, our only hope, healer and the provider and the savior. Thank you for hearing our prayers, seeing our tears, holding our hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Good afternoon, Lebanon family and friends. At this time, I have been given the awesome task of introducing someone that is very near and dear to my heart, my boss, my friend, Dr. Lorreen Richards Usher. Dr. Lorreen Richards Usher was born in Costa Rica, Central America, from Caribbean descent. Dr. Usher holds a PhD in curriculum and instruction from Capella University. She is married to Pastor Dr. Anthony Usher, and together they have three adult professional sons, Arlington, Eric, and Mona. Dr. Lorene Usher is a committed educator whose time and effort are invested in her students and their accomplishments. She has been an educator for over 30 years in Latin America, the United States, and currently serves as the principal of the Linden SBA School located in Laurelton, New York. Under the leadership of Dr. Lorraine Usher, the Linden School serves as a Christian institution that focuses on the emotional, intellectual, spiritual, and physical development of its students. 
Dr. Usher is also a stickler for holistic health, which she incorporates with her educational skills to help her students become the best versions of their self. In addition to being an educator, Dr. Usher sits on the board, is an active member, and a professional facilitator with the award-winning For Real Women International for over 13 years. I would be remiss if I did not also add that Dr. Usher is a phenomenal leader who mentors, uplifts, and supports her staff with love, caring, and the hands of God through the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. After the next musical selection, please be blessed by Dr. Lorreen Richard Usher. was paralyzed by fear when they heard a mighty multitude was quickly drawing near but as they prayed for deliverance the victory would begin for when we call upon the Lord we summon all of heaven so pray
Wow. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Didi, for that special music. Stay on your knees. This is where the battle is won. Thank you so much. What a message. I'm already, already blessed. I say good evening to every one of you and a happy Sabbath to the Lebanon SDA Church family. Thank you so much, Sister Joseph, for that beautiful introduction. And I also want to congratulate you and your team and a special shout out to Sister Jackie for inviting me to be with you all this evening on your women's ministry program. I hope and pray that this message this evening will fill your hearts with blessings. The world in which we live today is so uncertain. Life is not guaranteed. There are three phrases that we constantly hear on a daily basis on our media and even talking with each other. Phrases like, this is our new normal. Phrases like, it is what it is. Phrases like, what's gonna be next? Fear is empowering our minds right now. We are tense to what is next. COVID-19 is terrorizing the entire world. And the big question is, what do I do? God tells us in his word in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Do you know that our minds play a very important role in our well being? Our mind is connected to our brain, and the brain is the central organ in our body that controls our organs and our genes. We have the power, the love, and the sound mind that God gave us to control what enters in our minds. God is with us and we need to affirm our minds in order to have a balanced mindset. Our topic for this evening is stay united, stay joyful, stay in prayer, let us pray. Kind and most everlasting Father, as we sit together this evening as women, we are inviting your presence to be with us. Help us to listen to your word and help us to receive it. In Jesus name we pray, amen. This evening, I would like to go through these three steps. And the first step that we're going to um, work on this evening is staying united. To stay united with one another and with God, it means to be intentional. And not only intentional, we need to know our value and our power that God gave us as women. When God came up with the idea to create the woman, he used a word. And he actually used this word only five times times in the Bible. And to every time he used this word, he was actually referring to either God, either Jesus, or either the Holy Spirit. 
and the function of the Holy Spirit is to be a comforter, an intercessor, an advocate, counselor, and also a supporter. I want us now to look at these five verses in the Bible, the five times that Jesus used this word, helper. And I want us to analyze these um, texts. You can write them down for reference la references later on as you go over them. And that is Hebrews chapter 13 and verse six. I repeat, Hebrew 13 and verse six. Therefore, we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. Amen. Let's look at Psalms 54 and verse 4. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. Again, the word helper, he was referring to God here. Let's look at John 14 and verse 16. In this context here is when Jesus was going back to heaven and the disciples was very sad because they had been walking along with Jesus and working together with him. They were very sad. And Jesus told them, I will ask the father and he will give you another helper. So be with you forever. Let's look at John 15 and verse 26. John 15 and verse 26. But when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me, referring here to the Holy Spirit. And or a last text, Genesis 2 and verse 18. And I'm sure that most of us, we are familiar with this text. And the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. When God created you as a woman, he used the word helper, meaning you can function in the capacity of the Holy Spirit. This is your power if you anchor on Jesus himself. Consider yourself special. Consider yourself privileged when God created you as a woman. My dear women of integrity, and this is what I will report to you as the women's ministry of the Lebanon SDA Church. God created you, God created me as a helper to function in the capacity of the Holy Spirit. We are not the Holy Spirit. But we can function in that capacity. And the function of the Holy Spirit is to advocate, to intercede as a comforter, as a counselor, as a helper. This is the power that God gave you and I with one condition. We have to stay anchored on him. We cannot be fearful. This evening, I want to challenge you, women's ministry of the Lebanon SDA Church, unite your powers and pray, intercede for each other, advocate for each other, intercede for the different families in the church, we cannot develop the spirit of fear 
Instead, use the power that God gave you with love and a sound mind to bring other women together and intercede, advocate for each other and the world. Prostrate yourself before God, forgiving one another, confessing our sins, being authentic and transparent, uniting with our sisters. When you're united, sisters, you will dispel toxic and negative thoughts. You will not tolerate abuse, anger, pain, because you will be protective of each other. You will be each other's helper. As women, we are conditioned and we learned from a young age to be envious of each other, to criticize each other, to fight against each other and feel ourselves better than our sister. And the list goes on and on and on. And you know what I'm talking about. I want to encourage you this evening to rise above, anchor yourself back to God and reclaim your power as a helper, functioning in the capacity of the Holy Spirit. Empower your mind this evening. Ignite your brain to receive it and your organs will rejuvenate and bring healing to your soul as you walk in your power. Step number two, stay joyful. To stay joyful in the Lord, it means to be intentional. And not only intentional, you need to stay anchor in your power that God gave you as a helper. Let us look at four texts this evening that can help us to stay joyful. Psalms 35 and verse 9. Psalms 35 and verse 9. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. Amen. A helper is someone who is always joyful, authentic, resilient, and a woman of God's own heart. Psalms 100 and verse 1. And a lot of us, we're familiar with this text. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and with courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. A joyful woman does not harbor hatred, resentment, guilt, and bitterness. The way you live your life is a reflection of the way you love your God. Accept the power that God gave you. Rejoice in him. Give him glory. Prostrate before him and ask him to help you regain that power today. You have the power of influence to turn things around in your life and in your surrounding. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 14. Enjoy prosperity while you can. But when hard times strike, realize that both come from God. Remember that nothing is certain in this life. We are living in a very uncertain world 
with all that is going on around us and with us. People are dying daily. We don't have what, we don't know what is next. Love each other. Stay joyful and forgive one another. When you forgive, you change the structure of your brain in a positive direction. Forgiveness enables you to release toxic thoughts of anger, resentment, bitterness, shame, grief, regret, guilt, and hate. When you develop the ability to forgive, you will have greater control over your emotions and will be less angry, upset, hurt, and you will be much healthier. My dear women, have integrity on all our viewers out there. If you have been cherishing these toxic thoughts, now is the time to let go. Now is the time. Change your mindset. We are getting ready for heaven. And God is indicating to us as women that we got to stand in our position and walk in our power. I had a conversation with someone this week. And the conversation went like this. You know, COVID-19 is affecting everyone. But one thing we're noticing is that there is a high percentage of men dying. Women are dying too, but the, the percentage of dying is more with men. No one knew the answer why. So I went and did a little research. And I came up with an article I stumbled in an article that really caught my attention. And this article is written by Dr. Mo Alem. She is a scientist and a physician. And the article is entitled On the Genetic Superiority of Women. I'm going to read it word for word for you because each one of us can have a different interpretation of this article. She said that the cells of genetic females have two X chromosomes one for, from their mothers and one from their fathers. While those are genetic males have only one X chromosome from their mothers and one Y chromosome. This is crucial because X chromosomes come in hon handy for vital functions like building and maintaining the human brain and the immune system. And biologists have long understood that XX chromosomes give females an advantage in some areas. Having the use of a spare X in case the other is somehow defective is why females are less susceptible to disorders like color blindness. For instance, and she went on to say that, but we're only just now beginning to understand the full advantage that this extra X chromosome confers. It's not just that women have a spare X chromosome to swab in, rather, the more than 2,000 genes that combined make up two X chromosomes are used by cells that actually interact and cooperate within a woman's body. Each cell predominantly uses one X chromosome over the other. So if one X chromosome has genes that are better at recognizing invading viruses like COVID-19, for instance, immune cells using that X can focus on that task, while immune cells using the other X chromosome focus on, say, killing cells 
infected with COVID-19 instead, making the fight against the virus more efficient. And she said, typical males by contrast are forced to get by in life with just one X chromosome. What if a male's particular genes aren't able to competently recognize or kill off cell infected with a coronavirus? In that case, his ability to fight the infection will be limited. His solitary X is the only one he's got. The bottom line is when it comes to dealing with the trauma and stressors of life, whether it's avoiding a serious congenital malformation, a developmental disability, or fighting off an infection, females have genetic options and genetic males don't. Women, do you see how powerful you are? God created you as a helper. You are special. The devil knows this because he was present in Genesis 2.8. And from then, he'd been fighting against you, against me. And we actually believe it where we even fight against each other. God made you strong, powerful, influential. Even the cells in your body was made to come together to fight, to survive, stand against your adversity while you're anchored in Jesus himself. In order for your XX chromosomes to function properly and healthy, it begins in the mind. Purpose in your mind to stay positive. Affirm yourself. Stay joyful. Love each other. Walk in your power. Step number three, staying in prayer. Keep praying, keep advocating for each other, intercede for each other, be a comforter for each other and a support. Walk in your power. Let's look at Philippians chapter four and verse seven. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplications, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. My dear sisters, this text is clear. Even though the world is falling apart, The word of God tells us that we're not supposed to be anxious about anything or be fearful about anything. All we need to do is to stand in our purpose to be a helper. Stand in our power, confront our battles, with prayer and supplications, giving God thanks, 
that he already answered our prayers. Put our request before him while we are anchored in him. And he will give us that peace that passes all understanding through Jesus Christ. Do you desire to have that peace today and always? If it's that is your desire, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me at this time. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your word. We accept it in your name. And we stand today in our position. We're walking in our power. We recognized that you created us as a helper. So now we move into interceding for each other, advocating for each other, being a comforter for each other, and being a supporter for each other. In Jesus' name. Amen. Stay united. Stay joyful. And stay in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we give you praise and honor because you alone are worthy. We come in the name of Jesus. And as he taught us to pray, please forgive us of our transgressions as we forgive those who transgress against us. For that, God, we come boldly to your throne of grace. Father God, we're coming specifically to bring our families and to bring our marriages. God, you are a perfect God. And in the very beginning, you created families, God, when you created Adam, and you gave them Eve, and you said to them, be fruitful and multiply. In other words, go and recreate families, make families. And then it was a perfect time. And you were a God who said, you can't change. You're a God that changed not. You are the same yesterday, today, and you will be forevermore. But God, we have changed. The world has changed. Marriages have changed. Families have changed, God. And we've deviated drastically from the way, God, you want marriage and families to be. We have moved away, oh Father God, from your word. And so today, God, families are in turmoil. It's all upside down. But God, we know that it's not lost because you are still in charge. And so today, oh Father God, we come to you and we beg of you, God, to restore our families, bring healing to our families, God, as we bind all deception, all strife and misunderstanding, divisions and all the negative influences and powers that seek to come against families. We come again to the Father God in the name of Jesus. And we, I pray, God, that you will send your peace, peace into our hearts and peace into our homes, that you give us love, God, one for another. And by the power of your spirit, God, that you please give husbands love for their wives, for their children, and that they provide spiritual leadership in their homes. I pray, O oh Father God, that wives will come back to the time of submitting to their own husbands and create godly homes and togetherness. And together, O oh Father God, that they raise children that will honor you and that will honor them as parents. God, we can't forget the single parents. That in itself is a challenge. But God, all things are possible with Christ who gives us strength. And so, God, yes, we may have messed up. In many ways, we may have messed up. But we come to you again today and we beg of you, Father God, to restore. Give us love in our hearts, one for another. 
give us forgiveness, O Father God, in our hearts, one for another. Help us to, to, to speak in love, to discipline in love, to respect and value each member of our family. I pray, O oh God, that you will bind us together with cords of love that can never, ever be broken. And I pray, God, that you will give us wisdom, give us knowledge, God, and the understanding to, to walk in your direction, to correct our ways, and to walk in the way, O oh Father God, that you want us to walk as family. You promised that we're going to be the head and not the tail. And so, God, being the head means that we've got to get this right. So, God, as we acknowledge you as our Lord and as our Savior, please, Father God, come close to us. Embrace our family. Give us, oh God, take away fear and give us heart. Help us to embrace the spirit, oh Father God, of boldness, of love, of a sound mind. And when we don't understand and when we feel tired, help us, oh Father God, to lean on you. Help us to always know that you are in charge and that you still rule in the affairs of man. Help us to trust you. And you, God, take all the honor and the glory and take all the praise. As we give you thanks, O oh God, again for family. We thank you, O oh Father God, for restoring. We thank you, Father God, for leading us. That you will indeed let your light shine through us and let the world see who our God is. God, you take all the thanks and the praise and ask it all in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen.
Eternal God and our Father, I come to you today on behalf of women. I thank you today for being our Creator. Thank you today for being our Redeemer and our Friend. Thank you today for the wonderful plan of salvation. You said in your word that you know the thoughts you think for each and every one of us. And that is to give us an experience. End. I ask God that you will forgive us of all our trespasses, our sins, and our iniquities. And you will help us, dear Father, to look to you who indeed is the author and finisher of our faith. I ask that you will strengthen us, that you will lift us up, that you will uphold us with your righteous right hand. I ask that you will help us to understand that you love us with an everlasting love. And you are an inclusive God. Therefore, we are not looked down on. We are not classified as the underdog where you are concerned. But we are your handmaid. And so you care about us and you have a wonderful plan for us. So in spite of the things that we might encounter on a daily basis, in spite of the hurt, the heartache, the pain, in spite of the times, Lord, when we were not sought off in the, 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 the way that we thought we would have, nevertheless, Lord, you still love us and you care for us. And your plan is to save us in your kingdom when you come. Have mercy on us. Help us to be good mothers, good wives, good friends. Help us to serve you, Lord, with a true heart. Help us to love you. Because in your word you said that we are to love you with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our strength, and with all our might. Help us, Lord, to care for each other as sisters. Help us to hold each other up and not to tear each other down. And help us to know, dear Father, that your plan is to save us when you come. So forgive us of our sins, be with us, cover us, visit each and every one of us, and help us that we will continue to give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, <laughs> 
coordinators and council members of the Women's Ministries Department of the Lebanon Church, I would like to thank everyone who played a part in the planning and implementation of this afternoon's event. We extend an extra special thank you to Dr. Laureen Richards Usher, our guest speaker, whose generous participation has contributed to the success of the program. Dr. Richard Usher, we sincerely appreciate your uplifting words of encouragement and affirmation. We thank you. Finally, to all of you who have tuned in and joined us this afternoon, we thank you for your presence. And now, I leave you with this blessing, taken from the book of Joshua, the first chapter. And it reads, Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen and amen. <laughs>